rate of change, right? And well, when you were talking about rate of change, you were looking for whether the function was increasing, decreasing, and constant, right? Does that remind you guys of slope, right? That's essentially what it is. And so that's what average rate of change is, is basically finding how are you changing from one quantity to, to the next? So we're going to be taking the notes in our handy dandy notebook. We're on page 20, correct? Okay, so on page 20, that's going to be our 1.1B.2 1 .1 intro to average rate of change notes. Okay, for short, um, because of pre-cal, you may, you may call it AROC, because that's what it's called in pre-cal, like for shorthand, AROC, uh, a average rate of change. All right. Okay, rate of change refresh. So what you were doing on the Des Desmos Explore activity was hopefully getting your brain back to the idea of um, what rate of change is. So this right here, this is what you learned about rate of change. So all the little circles, essentially what's the heart of it all, it's called slope. When you're written in M equals, um, Y equals MX plus B, that's gonna be your M. When you are finding it given two ordered pairs, that's your Y2 minus your Y1 or your X2 minus your X1. Uh, rise over run, if you're looking at it graphically. And how many of y'all have seen in delta Y over delta X? Delta Y over delta X means change in Y over change in X. I know you want to say triangle Y and triangle X, but it's called delta in math terms right now. So delta Y over delta X. So if you feel like these are things you need to recall of what rate of change is, then this is the first thing that you'll be writing down on your page 20. Well, the first thing. What I also want to reiterate is that when you're looking at your units, so like what unit you're being measured in, remember your unit rate, uh-oh, your unit rate comes from, comes from me trying to highlight, yeah, your unit rate comes from your output over your input, your output variable over your input variable. So what does your Y represent per what your X represent? So the five circles are our key things. Um, if you remember everything in those five circles, is that something you need to write down? If you need the refresher, then you're writing down the five circles. You don't have to draw my circles, by the way. You can just write the words. Um, I was told only slightly crazy people can draw a perfect circle. So don't feel pressure to do so. Okay, essentially all we're doing is comparing two quantities, an independent versus a dependent, and those quantities will change. Aye, aye, captains. All right, again, remember, if you can't see or you feel like you need to go back and re refer to this, this is always on your handy dandy canvas. Okay, now, because we're big kids, we now are going to talk about average rate of change. Average rate of change, if you look up here, is this a linear function? No, okay. Um, rate of change specifically applies to linear functions. Average rate of change can apply to any function, okay? And that's because it's just between point A and point B. Given an interval, I'm asking you, what is the change here, okay? So we went over function notation. Remember that, realize that, maybe you'll remember, I can't even talk. Realize that we're written in function notation for this. It's f of b minus f of a over b minus a, okay? And that's because you're given an interval from a to b. Average rate of change applies to any function. It's no longer just a linear situation. So that's why we don't refer to it as slope because slope refers to the linear model. Okay, so this is the new way that we'll be looking at our handy dandy friend, A Rock. All right, are we ready to apply? We're ready to apply A Rock through an example. All right, um, so just clarifying average, you don't have to write this down, I'm just going to summarize our thoughts. So, in formal definition, average rate of change, the values of the endpoints on an interval are used to summarize the changes in the dependent variable over the interval. 
Okay, that's all we're doing. That's basically it's saying, how are your y's changing from one x to another? Okay, so if you got this far in your Desmos, did y'all see Karen's marathon? Anyone? Yep, if you got that far, Karen was um, um, running. And notice that it's not just one line, right? Um, she has different intervals of that she, of her speed. So on A, she has one speed. B, C, D, E, F. Um, she was either E, what, what was happening at C and E? She stopped, she paused. She's like, ooh, these nine miles got me. Ooh, these 18 miles got me. I, I'm not mad at you for stopping either, Karen. Um, and so things like that. This is where an example of how each piece would have its own rate of change, right? Um, and so that's where this comes into play. So just keep it in mind when we're looking at it. This is why your Desmos was their intro explore talking about, hey, look at this little guy. Um, now, our example, here we go. So we have a table here and it's from 2005 to 2012. On this table, we have set values and it's asking us what is the average rate of change of the price of gasoline between 2007 and 2009. So it's giving us our interval to analyze, okay? So our given interval, our interval that we're looking at is from 2007 to 2009. So that means that this is gonna be my A and this is gonna be my B. Does that make sense? So this leads me to using average rate of change. So A rock formula equals F of B minus F of A over B minus A. So keeping that in mind, we are evaluating. So we're gonna need to find F of 2009 minus F of 2007 all over 2009 minus 2007. What is the value at 2009? We get $2.41, right? So we have $2.41. What was the value at 2007? $2.84. And what is 2009 minus 2007? Two. What is $2.41 minus $2.84? Did you get negative 43 cents? Okay, so then we wanna find our unit rate. Unit rate means that your denominator needs to equal one. So all you're gonna do is simplify this. So approximately, what is negative 0.43 divided by two? Negative 0.43. I'm saying. So that's our average rate of change from 2007, 2015. Well, telling someone that doesn't really make sense, right? Like, oh, negative 2,000, 100, 215 thousandths. Um, what does that mean in terms of gaps? Doesn't make sense. So you have to put it in terms of what the problem is talking about. So for this problem, this is money. Am I going to have three decimal places for money? No, it's going to round that one up to a two. So that means that our amount here is we have a negative 22 cents and your, what did our Y represent? Our Y is the cost of, right? The cost of a gallon. And then our, our X is our time. Our independent is our cost. No, I'm sorry. Our independent is our years. Our dependent is our cost. So when you're writing your units out, it's going to be your dependent over your independent. So negative 22 cents 
per gallon per year. Does that make sense? So that was the cost, our decline per gallon per year. So from 2007, 2009, there was a decrease in the cost of gasoline over time. So again, when you're writing your unit, your unit comes down to what's your dependent represent over your independent. And our dependent represented the cost per gallon and our independent represented our year. So that's how my units would work. How do you feel about AROC? Doable? Okay, let's try it without um, anything else. So just looking at a graph, and it says that I'm gonna analyze the graph from negative one to two. So all I'm looking at is from negative one to two. And I'm gonna analyze what's the average rate of change. It's clearly not the rate of change because it's over a wide interval and a lot of things are taking place, right? So I'm looking for the average rate of change. When you have a graph, you can do that a little easier because um, you can actually do rise over run in this sense. So graphically, I can say, okay, how much did I rise? So I went up from one to four, which is three, right? How much did I run? I ran one, two, three spaces. And I went to the left, so it's negative three. Do we see that? So I can calculate this. average rate of change by using it the graph itself. So the A rock here equals my change in my Y over my change in my X. And what's my change in my Y? Three, the change in my X, negative three, which equals negative one. Yes? All right. Without that, by paper, I'm looking for this would be my A, this is my B. So remember using F of B minus F of A divided by B minus A. So we have F of two minus F of negative one over two minus negative one. What is the value at F of two? At F of two, the value is Two, one. So the output is one, right? What is the output at F of negative one? Four. A minus a negative means I'm doing what? A negative times a negative makes a positive. And two plus one is three. Are we still going to result in negative one? Yes. If you have a dollar, you spend four dollars, what's left in your bank account? Negative three dollars. That's if you have a good relationship with your bank and they'll allow you to do that. Okay. All right. So do we see the difference between um, algebraically doing it and then graphically doing it? Either way, is it not a skill set you already have? Yes, Ms. Jones, it is. It's in our brains. Okay. Awesome. Questions, comments so far about AROP? Okay. Challenging you. Here's yours. Find the average rate of change. You have f of x equals x minus 2 times the square root of x over the interval from 1 to 9. What is my a rock? Go. All right. So on average rate of change, again, we're using the formula. And the formula is for a rock, so for our average rate of change, that's gonna be our F of B minus our F of A all over B minus A. So given this is our A, this is our B. So to find the a rock, we have F of nine minus F of one over nine minus one. So when we substitute nine in, because this is function notation, right? That means we're substituting a nine. The square root of nine is? The square root of nine. 
three. Three times two is six. And so nine minus six gives us three. All I did was substitute in for x, right? We're gonna do the same thing with one. Square root of one is one. Two times one is two. One minus two is gonna give us a, a negative one, right? What's nine minus one? Eight. A negative times a negative makes a positive. So this becomes four over eight, which equals one half. So you should have got your A rock to be one half. If you made a mistake, it probably was at your substituting and evaluating. Remember, when you're evaluating on PEMDAS, you read your book from left to right, you solve your math problems from left to right once everything is simplified. Okay? All right, on Thursday, we're gonna be doing applications. So we're gonna be doing word problems and applying average rate of change to situations um, as we navigate through this. So hopefully we have an understanding of a rock so that come Thursday, we are rocking and rolling on our applications. Yes? All right, remember, finish your Desmos. That is your homework assignment um, if you did not complete, complete it in class. And thank you for a great day.